Hey, you wonderful kids. Mrs. Williams again, here to read you Magnets Push and Magnets Pull by David A. Adler. I probably won't read every word of this book because it's a little bit longer, but if you have this book or you can check it out somehow or um, buy it on Amazon or thriftbooks.com, it is a good one to have in your library. A world without magnets would be a world without computers, printers, cell phones, televisions, vacuum cleaners, and microwave ovens. It's a magnet's invisible pulling and pushing force called magnetism that helps power all these devices. Magnets are attracted to anything made of iron, steel, nickel, or cobalt and some less plentiful metals, including neodymium, oh my, and samarium. I'm not sure I said that right. Chemist, uh, and any chemistry majors out there, maybe you can uh, correct my pronunciation there. Pretty sure I butchered that. Uh, anyway, there are two kinds of magnets, simple magnets and electromagnets. You are probably most familiar with simple magnets, the kind you find in toys or use to hold papers to your refrigerator doors. Do you have a simple magnet? If you do, you can use it as a metal tester, but be careful with your magnet. Do not bring it close to a watch, a clock, a computer, a television, or any delicate instrument. It could damage them. Well, test some US coins. Does your magnet stick to any of them? It shouldn't. U.S. coins aren't made mostly of iron, steel, nickel, or cobalt. Pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters are made mostly of copper. Place your magnet on the hood of a car. Does it stick? Most cars are made from steel. So do you think it would stick? Take a few cans from your pantry. Does your magnet stick to them? Some cans are made of steel. Others are made of aluminum. Try it out. See if it sticks to some. Simple magnets come in many shapes and sizes. If you have a magnet of any size, you can use it to test for the force of magnetism. Place a few steel paper clips on a table or any flat surface. Put the magnet on the same surface about one foot away and slowly move the magnet toward the paper clips. You're just moving the magnet, but the paper clips will soon be moving too. They'll slide across the table and stick to the magnet. Your magnet's invisible pulling force pulled the paper clips across the table. Give it a try. If your magnet is strong enough, it'll work through paper, water, or even glass. Place a paper clip on a sheet of paper. Hold the magnet beneath the paper. Without ever touching the paper clip, you should be able to use your magnet to move it. You should do that if you have a younger brother or sister. It's like a magic trick. You'll have them mes mesmerized. Drop a few paper clips in a shallow bowl of water. Hold your magnet at the surface of the water. If the magnet is strong enough, it will pull the clips right out of the water. With a really strong magnet, you would be able to hold it against the side of the bowl and move the clips on the other side of the glass. You ought to try that one. A bar magnet and some iron filings, it's available at most hardware stores, will help you understand magnetism. Cover your bar magnet with a white unlined sheet of paper. Center the paper over the magnet and sprinkle the iron filings onto the paper. Gently tap the paper. Now look at the iron filings. They should form a pattern showing the, mag the magnetic field. The pattern shows where the magnetic force is strongest. It's strongest by its two ends, where many of the filings should have gathered. If you listen to the last story, then you know what we're talking about. These two ends of a magnet are called its, what? Did you say poles? Good job. Each magnet has two poles, a north pole and a south pole. You can test your bar magnet to see which is its north pole and which is its south pole. Tie a thin string around the middle of the magnet going lengthwise. Tap the other end of the string to, excuse me, tape the other end of the string to the bottom of a wooden bookshelf or a table. The string should be just long enough to let the magnet hang freely. 
Be sure there are no other magnets nearby and nothing made of iron or steel or nickel or cobalt. Nothing that would confuse your magnet. And then gently tap on the magnet. When it stops moving, one pole should be pointing north and the other should be pointing south. Ask an adult which direction is north. And with a marker, write N on that end of the magnet. Write S on the opposite end. Sailors, hikers, pilots, and many others, they use compasses to help them find their way. The needle inside a compass is really a magnet. One end of the needle always points, you got it, north. Look at any globe. The most northern part of the globe is labeled North Pole. The most southern part of the globe is labeled the South Pole. The poles on every magnet always point north and south because the Earth is a huge magnet with a relatively weak magnetic field. Its magnetic pole is strongest at its two ends, its north and south poles. All right. With two barred magnets, you can see how north and south poles attract and repel each other. See, the south and the north ends attract each other, um, but the two north ends of the magnet repel or push away from each other. The poles of bar magnets are often marked N and S. If yours are not, you can test them by letting them hang freely, taping them, and then seeing which way each pole points. Then mark your, your magnets with an N and an S. All right, you guys, I'm gonna stop this reading for now. I might read you the rest of this a little bit later, but that's enough for now. Okay, I hope you're doing well. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.